Hello, adults. Yes, it's me, the future. I am sad and I am scared. Will the world be better when I grow up? Will I be okay? We already saw through um, many of the systemic uh, inequities that have existed in our country for for decades, the disparity between um, uh, low, low income people and those who are in um, average or higher income brackets. The academic disparity was already there. Now you add COVID to the mix and you have uh, children trying to learn from home and children who may not be as well nourished or as uh, emotionally and physically as they should be. And so we're really anticipating what, what educators are calling a COVID slide, where the trajectory is going to continue to go down uh, much longer than we would uh, hope uh, once uh, financial supports are back in place and schools are open. Uh, I think we should all anticipate that our customers and our children are going to continue to be um, kind of digging themselves out for a long time to come. And where I see the greatest stress right now is with mothers. Um, there's sort of this uh, uh, very uh, unfortunate intersection between, you know, loss of work. I think we've lost over a million women in the workplace since the onset of COVID, uh, primarily because women often serve as the primary caregivers. And if school is not in session, then somebody has to stay at home to take care of the children. So with moms being at home, being isolated, having less money, sometimes they are heads of household, and they're having to try to uh, manage their kids and their own educational needs as well as, well as their own, they are really, really in bad shape. And I spoke to some of the um, administrators of our Head Start programs here in Madison. Um, this is a program, federally funded program, as you may know, that supports uh, families uh, with children living in poverty or um, at the poverty line. And basically the, the message we're hearing is, I'm barely able to survive. So I see credit unions playing this incredible role in responding to the needs of uh, groups that have often been marginalized by other financial institutions. And I know that teachers, because they're frontline responders to these families, are feeling a lot of compassion fatigue because they're hearing these very gut-wrenching stories from families and there's only so much they can do. And I'm certain that, you know, as financial providers, your staff are also in the front lines getting uh, information from people who are really in crisis. So um, I applaud you for trying to support your employees as they're responding to the needs of others. But I think we should be mindful that this is going to take a very, very long time for us to get back to some sense of normality or a, a sense of security, people feeling secure about their health and well-being. But I'm on this fantasy that we can actually eliminate poverty. Now, don't laugh. Don't laugh. You know, I've had enough people laugh at me about that already. But we want to do something that's evolutionary, revolutionary, sustainable, and scalable about helping to mitigate in the generational stubborn poverty that grips households and communities. And we're going to, and we're chipping away at it. And it's a complex equation with so many different factors involved in it. We probably can't do it all by ourselves, but by golly, it just feels like we should do more than just sit here and look at the problem and do nothing about it. So. We've got some ideas, we're working on some things, we have some theories, we're investing some money, but we wanna do something about poverty and that's, that's a big initiative for us this year. And in 2021, with our partnership with the city of San Diego, um, we are working with them on small businesses, um, providing assistance to small businesses in the promise zone. So in the promise zone, 
here in San Diego, it's it's uh, a six, I think it's six point seven square miles of our um, it's low income communities in in San Diego, primarily communities of color, and so we are working with them on you know how to help the business community in that promise zone. Um, we're sort of, you know still working on the on the details. You know, originally we were looking at uh, like storefront development, making sure that they had the funds to um, make sure their storefront was um, attractive, up to date, safe, all of the things that, you know, business, you don't think about it, but the storefront of a business is important. And especially in low income communities. Um, that was one idea we're working on, but we're working on several things with the city of San Diego to do it. This is not just a one and done for us. It's, it's again, who we are, um, very, very important. It's just a really short story about standing up. There was a conference I was at, it was many years ago. Um, it was a business development and marketing conference and the speaker uh, started talking about gay marriage. And he said, you know, and if it disgusts you, like it disgusts me, and no, 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 no. And I'm like, looking around, I said, did I just hear that correctly? And I did. And rather than saying something, I just got up and walked out. Um, but I thought to myself, I should have stood up and, and say something. But I, I did bring it to the attention of the, um, the organizers um, of the conference. And um, he, the speaker did apologize to me afterwards, but that's one of those things where if I would, could do something differently and uh, you know, take a stand, then and there I would have. And as I said, we started to think about what can the larger credit union community do? What can we do collaboratively, collectively to uplift the community that you know, perhaps individual credit unions can't do individually. And, and we came up with a roster of four or five things. And uh, I, I happened to, to mention one of these during a, a, a panel discussion at uh, the AAC, the African American Credit Union Coalition uh, uh, National Conference. And I'm, an, I, I'm the, the new freshman backbencher on that board. So, yeah, and it's such a terrific board with such you know terrific committed people. Um, but I, I mentioned a couple of them, and including this this notion of creating a de novo credit union to serve historically black colleges and universities, um, their faculty, staff, students, and alumni, as, re as well as the residents and small businesses in the community surrounding the campus. Threw it out as something as, hey, wouldn't this be cool? And you know the response that that, that I received immediately following that has been overwhelming. Uh, re responses from you know lions of the industry, uh, uh, those from natural person credit unions, corporate credit unions, vendors, uh, trade associations, and, and even regulators. You know, raising their hand and saying. You know, this is something that we as a system, we as a credit union community can do. Yep, no one's going to get rich, no one's going to make money, but it's going to demonstrate the credit union commitment and, and the credit union passion for doing good and doing right for people that need us most. And I think we, we cultivate trust by really, um, I would say, just listening to 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 one another and and again showing that empathy and giving a little bit of grace um so that you know it's it's not all and it really you know it it, it, it has the power to transform lives if we really believe on it it's not just this 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 kumbaya it's like your own life at the end of the story when you're sitting in, a, in your deathbed you can ask yourself you know did was i able to to transform somebody's lives you know did i leave this place better than i found it you know in terms of family and and you know part of the reason why i love this this work so much is because you know i every day I get a chance to live my my footprint or my fingerprint on the work that hopefully one day somebody will say you know what if that hadn't happened we wouldn't have this today ah muy bien yo soy una cooperativa 
credit unions were the original social networks. I, I know I've heard you say that before. I've heard other people say it. This is our time. People helping people. We have a real opportunity to lead during this time of change. I love the, the industry's commitment to change. Uh, we're a part of that. I know you're a part of that. Your organization is a part of that. And you personally are a part of that. And um, now is our time. I love the idea that Maurice Smith had and that CUNA has supported for the eighth cooperative principle. Uh, we want to be a part of that, the schools first. Uh, we should re really be leading uh, how we help our members and our team members through this time of incredible change. And what an opportunity to break down barriers of, of racism and create opportunities for all of our members, regardless of their uh, background or race or color or religion or whatever the case may be, ethnicity. Um, we should be leaders. And uh, I, I've been saying for 30 years, there's never been a better time to, to be a credit union, but I believe it now more than ever. Um, let's be the change, uh, not just lead the change.